So as you dig that out, would I be right to assume then that, uh, so your budgeting was based on what? Um, now that we're going to have... Uh, Chair, I would like Paul to mm. take that comment because he was part of the team that did the budget in 2020. Okay, Thank yes, you. Paul. Uh, Chair and members, <clears throat> uh, like my CEO said, the planning and operations were guided by the business and implementation plan. So the budgeting in the airline starts with coming up with the operating schedule. The operating schedule shows details of which routes you want to operate, how many times in a week, which aircraft type you are going to deploy, and when you are going to open what route. So in coming up with that, it is uh, driven by the capacity or the available equipment to be specific, the aircraft you have. So in 2020, 2021, the year under audit, we, at the time of the budgeting, we did not have, we had only four bombardiers. So we had, and the planning, was to get the Airbus, the first Airbus in December 2020 and the second in Feb 2021, and they came on schedule. So when we were doing the budget, and now I will go to the shortfall, we envisaged that when the Airbuses come, we would immediately deploy them to the long haul routes, which they are supposed to be flying. So our planning had a number of routes, about 18. But in actual sense, when now the Airbus came, there had to be a process of having it certified to the uh, license to operate it, which took long. So basically, the whole of 2021, 2020, 2020 2021, we did not fly the Airbus, whereas they had come, because we were going through a certification process, which took long up to October 2021. So that explains, one, why we have uh, a shortfall in the revenue performance. Because from the Auditor General's uh, query, which is correct, the airline had planned to correct 304 billion internally generated revenue, but only corrected 48 billion. So that explains, that my explanation is because we had planned to use the Airbus on the long haul, we did not. And when you go specifically to the specific schedule, we operated 31% of the planned sh schedule. So if we had to compare the actual operated schedule with the performance shortfall, we are off by 15% if you compare the operated schedule with the generated revenue. But from the planning, we had put a, a bigger figure because of the anticipation that would operate all the 18 routes. The other reason why we couldn't uh, perform according to the planned uh, budget, <clears throat> you all remember in March 2020, we had an airspace closure due to COVID. So during the planning time, which happened in May and June, we all expected that we would be back in the air, effective August 2020. So our budget figures start from August to June 2021. But the airspace was opened in October. So we have a bulk of two months planned revenue that we were unable to generate due to the limitation of the airspace closure. Also, when the airspace opened, most countries were limiting the frequencies we were meant to fly in their countries as they were monitoring the post-COVID uh, situation. So we flew less than we had planned, in addition to the fact that our assumptions in planning the post-COVID era 
were based on the pre-COVID, which was not correct. No airline, whether regional or international, had the visibility of what would happen after COVID. So the whole industry dynamics changed and we did not have visibility of the number of passenger travel that could happen after COVID. In fact, chair and members, that's what, what, why reviewing the strategic plan and strategic direction is very important at this stage, because the dynamics that were applicable when the business and implementation plan were, was being made are different. To date, the aviation industry is at about 75% of the travel capacity that was happening pre-COVID. So, uh, chair and members, those are the reasons why we did not perform to the projected budget. Thank you. What, what would you say, and, and maybe this would come through your strategic plan, but we want to have a grip of some, some kind of happening, the team could not retrieve the documentation that was exp explaining the situation at the time. There are not many. Of the entire report, there are like two issues which the documentation then would have explained the situation, but was never availed to the team. So when we were preparing for this, we retrieved those. So for such isolated cases, uh, chair and members would request that the record, if possible, is corrected because the situation at the time was could have been supported by the documents, could not be traced, and subsequently we got them. But for issues like stock, we admit that at the time it was the case. Thank you. Yeah, but you see, the Auditor General is the one mandated to do the auditing. Not Kosase. Kosase is not, we are not auditors. We have audit. Maybe briefly explain to why you are you terminated, why were you suspended? <laughs> because some of us, we are not aware. We are just hearing go suspended. <laughs> mm. You see, unfortunately for the CEO, she's seated next to me. So whenever she whispers something, I hear. <laughs> and uh, she's saying it is not part of this. Uh, Madam CEO, at, at the start, in my preamble, I said, you know, uh, she will say, well, I didn't appoint myself. Uh, but at least we have that on record. We shall take it up eventually with uh, whoever appointed her. You know, because for her, even if she had just uh, senior six, she would say, but well, for me, I was appointed. So, uh, she, it, it might not be it might not be her fault. Yeah? We, we shall take it up with whoever appointed that. But for us, we note it as a concern that there is a certain qualification that is required. Why is it that that qualification was not considered? And of course, everything else we discussed yesterday, the appointment and all of that. Um, I want to suggest, colleagues, that we now look at the other issues, uh, the other CVs, of uh, the, the other documents. Yes, Honorable Mzali. Yes, hold on. Uh, Chair, we had raised very pertinent issues and mm. they were not answered. I had actually thought to chair there was a NPA, there was a Minister of Finance, there was a Minister of Works, and a team of experts uh, which developed the business plan in conjunction with NPA and in, in line with the government. Uh, uh, plans and uh, national, national development program. So that 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 started off the the company, the airline, uh, until now that we are now moving to develop for a strategic plan which will guide the continuation and development of the of the airline further. Thanks. So. What, what, what deadline are we looking at uh, now that you're working on a strategic plan? What, what deadline? What are the timelines? Our deadline is up to September 15th. September 15th. To have uh, completed it. Was, was uh, the board expenditure, which was over and above, 
projection. Yeah, so a review showed that uh, the board had projected to spend 69,622 US dollars. That's about 262 million. But eventually, the board spent 195,956,000 ,000 US dollars. That's about 738 million. So the board spent over and above the projection of 476 million. So what happens? Because if you budget to spend 262 million, but you end up spending 738 million, there is a problem. What, what happens along the way? Madam Accounting Officer, that's to you. Spend it. Which year was that? You were terminated. Which year was that? 2019. Through your chair, who attended the exit meeting of the team here? But you're speaking off record, Madam. As among the team here, I was, plus the internal auditors and myself. The but they had also joined, I think, a month. Both yeah. of them had only, yes. All, both of us had joined just a month, but we attended. Honorable Chair, excuse me. Um, Madam CEO Jennifer, can you? If I mentioned before that when you start a new route, it takes uh, three years to reach maturity. If, you done, if you've done your homework right, it's a good route, you've done your feasibility studies and everything. And in those three years, you start on the lower side and keep improving. Remember when you're operating a route, whether you carry a full board or half board, the cost of operation is, remains the same. So, this financial year that is under review by this committee today was looking at an operation that was smaller. I will check the records in terms I, I, of... I, I, what are we, what I want we to... interested in, so that we move quickly, is not because we are reviewing 2020-2021. I'm asking you about the profit loss level for 2021-2022. You're using so many words to give me a response. I wanted to reach the answer, but the, the, profit, the loss is higher. Reason being, we have started new routes, and they are starting on the lower side. Mm. How much is the total loss? Uh, in the unaudited figures, I think we have 200 and uh, ab above 200 million. Hmm? Uh, above 200 million. 200 million? Billion, sorry, billion. Uh, above yes. 200 billion? Yes, for the last year. So for we are auditing 2020, 2021. So yeah. now he's talking about 2021, 2022. Yes. That's yes. above 200 billion. Yes. Reason. Yes. yes, because that's why I started by giving a background that when you start a new route, and we've started many in this financial year, you start on the lower end, then when you mature and start consolidating, the bottom line keeps improving. What, what's the exact figure? Um, you would know. You can't just say above 200 billion. You're the head of finance, director. Uh, sure. You're consulting your CEO on whether to tell me the truth. No, Chair, the, the numbers are not yet audited. So, that's so where why have I'm you got bit, 200 billion from? I have the provisional numbers. That's what I'm asking about. That's what I'm interested in. Mm. It's something that needs a layman's language. We don't want to be too much technical. You say, when you start a new route, you need about three years maturity. To me, which I am saying, is it always the case? Or it is the, the demand that drives you to full board and the services that you do, you provide together with the marketing? Because if, for instance, you have come with a new plane between Entebbe and the Nairobi, and it is the services outweighing Kenya, what have you? Members, through your chair, 
So we, when we received the Airbuses in uh, 2020 and 2021, that was December 2020 and 2021, we immediately applied to have them certified. Now this process normally takes um, a period of 90 days uh, from the time you apply uh, right through to the time they validate all your processes, procedures, and uh, existence of personnel, uh, qualified personnel to operate these uh, aircraft. Uh, it is um, unfortunate that during that time of that application, uh, a lot of the standards that we had anticipated and we we did uh, to we benchmarked on to certify the aircraft changed, and these were provided by our uh, counterparts in the civil aviation. Now, because of that, uh, it led to a lot of extensions in the certification process because. This is not an activity we do alone. So when we do these activities, we do them in conjunction with our authority who approve that what we have provided to them is acceptable. Now, I'll, I'll, about that time, they presented a whole new set of standards that we had to use. And considering this is a new and advanced aircraft um, to this region, now that is what led to most of the delays that ended up uh, leading us to have this aircraft certified in August of that year. And then finally we were able to start flying in uh, October. Now what uh, my colleague from finance did not mention is that even after certifying, we had to go out and create the stations and get all the stations ready. And they these stations that the Airbus is finally currently flying to, we could not do it until we had the official authorization from our civil aviation. In a summary, that is it, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's proceed. As we try, as we come up with all ideas to bring up our revenues, we must manage our costs. And uh, we've been going through a lot of meetings back and forth as an executive, as a the management team. Where do we manage our costs? And usually the costs will be operational. There will be costs in maintenance. At the moment, we spend about 14 billion a, a year, kind of, in, um, in, in maintenance costs. But if we start our own AMO, which is the approved maintenance organization, then we will be able to maintain our own aircraft. We'll be able, we'll be in control of our own um, engineering structures. So the, the key thing is to manage our costs. Then if we manage our numbers in terms of recruitment and don't go beyond a certain number, uh, because the, the, the establishment audit will assist us in knowing who goes where and what are the profiles. That will manage uh, to help, will enable us to, to watch our wage bill. Because at the moment, much as we are looking at the losses, just about 19% is what the salary is. But the most of it comes with fuel, maintenance costs, ground handling, catering, airport charges. So that crooks of the matter is for us to be able to manage our costs. And once we manage our costs, then the revenues can be felt, and the loss will be minimized. Thank you. <laughs>